Paul will get his iPhone 4 when he comes back. When I came to work today, apparently he went to some Rangers game or something. So. Someone noticed I got a haircut. I have helmet hair. Can you tell I have helmet hair? You know why I have helmet hair, though? I have a buffang. That's right. Boom. I love my buffang. 60 amps with a battery that can actually output up to 90. Oh, it's awesome. All right. So today we're going to be going over a MacBook A1707 board that does not turn on. Let's try and see if we can figure out what's wrong with this MacBook. So this looks like an 820-00281 board. And the first thing we're going to do is see if we get 5 volts or 20 volts on the charger. So I have this little USB-C amp meter here. And after 3 seconds, it's stuck at 5.22 volts. You can usually tell if it's going to be at 5 or 20, because when it's stuck at 5 volts, it usually uses 10 milliamps. And when it go, it's about to go to 20 volts, you'll see it's using 100 to 300 milliamps. So let's try and figure out why this is. Now, these are the chips over here that talk to the USB-C charger. Here, 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 and here. And those chips are the CD3215s. Available on store.rossmangroup.com. Don't delay. Buy today. Get the C00 version rather than the B03 so it actually charges. That chip needs PP3V3 underscore G3 hot to work. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check this rail, which is PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. I'm going to open up a schematic in board view so that you can check it out. Now, just like you needed PP3V4 too on the older MacBooks to get a green light, on this one, you need PP3V3 underscore G3 hot to get 20 volts in the charger. So it's essentially the same general idea as the old boards, where there's, this is the power rail that has to show up before you get all the others. So I'm going to get this schematic and board view on the screen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the PP3V3 underscore G3 hot area. So this is where PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is going to be created. Now the first thing I'm interested in, before I blame the chip or anything, let's actually see if it's creating pipa 3 v 3 underscore G3 hot. So we're going to look on L8 uh, 6900 over there and see what we're getting. As you can see, we're getting zero volts in pepe 3 v 3 underscore G3 hot. So now we want to see why pepe 3 v 3 underscore G3 hot is missing, which means we're going to go to U6903 and zoom in. Now, which one of the pins on here do you think is going to be responsible for turning the chip on? Like, which pin do I have to send voltage on to for this to turn on? There's going to be two pins. Now, the first is going to be here, SUP. SUP stands for supply, and if you didn't know what it stood for, you can kind of guess a little bit by playing. It's kind of like a combination of playing Wheel of Fortune and also, play also looking at what's here. It says from USB-C source. So this is the charging voltage going into the chips. So this is charger voltage. It says from, so it's obvious to me that this is going to be input. And it says SUP, which is going to stand for supply. And then you have another pin over here. It says EN. EN is going to be for enable. And if you weren't sure what those things were, you can always simply Google Max 77596. You'll find a data sheet for it. This company is, has, has not gone full Apple yet in terms of hiding data sheets for every single one of their chips like Intersil did. Uh, so, you know, they didn't cuck to Apple on hiding all their data sheets from everybody. But they will likely soon, as soon as I say that. So we need this enable signal to be present. So let's just see if our enable signal is actually present. That's going to be on pin 10 of the chip, and that's small enough that I'm likely going to need a microscope to get in there. So pin 10 is going to be right down here. We are going to get my microscope focused in that area. Go, go, gadget microscope. Go, go. And let's see what we get on pin 10. Let's also see if Spectrum can manage to actually allow me to stream at one-third of the bandwidth that I pay for for more than five minutes. You may have noticed I haven't been uploading lately. That's because at the store I have no internet. 
Do I pay $409 a month for that internet? Absolutely. Have I paid for that internet for damn near seven years? Yes. Has it been absolute trash for the past seven years? Every single day, whether it's Time Warner, whether it's Spectrum, something's never changed. They're trash. Okay. Zero volts on enable, which means that the chip is not being asked to turn on, so I can't blame the chip. I can't blame a short circuit after it if it's not even being asked to turn on. I can't blame a chip. It's not, you know, you can't blame somebody for not doing their job if they never were at, were told what their job was or what it is they're supposed to do or that they're supposed to show up. So we're, we're going to look for where that enable signal comes from and go from there. So if I look over here, the first thing I'm going to do is try to figure out where this comes from. So this is going to come PMEN P3V3 underscore G3 hot. Now, usually, I would check this zero ohm resistor over here, R6921, to see if that resistor is bad. But from my experience, it never, ever, 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 ever goes bad. So I'm just kind of jumping over that because I kind of want to finish up my work quick today so I can get a burrito. So that signal is going to come from this chip over here, U7000, which is the ISL9239. This chip is very similar to the ISL6259. In fact, it's so similar to the ISL6259 that in Apple's own schematic, they labeled it the ISL6259. Great fucking engineering. Great job, schematic team. Telling us that we are not qualified to work on your product when you can't even get the names of the chip right. What? Look, look at this. ISL6259, U7000. I click it again, and it's an ISL9239. Is it an ISL9269 or an ISL9239? I don't know. Are we supposed to put more cooling in the i9 MacBook so it doesn't throttle? I don't know. I'm just an Apple engineer. How can I be expected to be useful? Anyway, back to this. So this is the ISL9239 chip, and we can find it right over here. And this is going to be the end of the line for that signal. That's probably going to be the cause of my problem. So let's just check it out. Yep, that's my good old ISL9239 or ISL6259, depending on whether you're, not, you're the stoned Apple engineer that wrote that schematic. And uh, by the way, everybody, if you need an ISL9239, you're not sure where to find it because Apple won't tell you. If you want to know where to find it and Intersil won't let you get it, well, don't worry about it because we got you covered. You can just get over here to store.rossmangroup.com and buy an ISL9239, which is actually in stock. It says out of stock for some strange reason, even though it's in stock because I, Mikey didn't update the inventory. Mikey! Mikey! ISL9239 says out of stock, but we have over 15 of them. It's going to show up as in stock very soon. Thank you very much, Danny Garcia. So that ship's going to be showing up in stock soon. Either that or there's going to be another employee that's stuck in the basement. We're going to turn this place into CSAT solution so fast, his head's going to spin right off. By the way, we're still looking for employees, so if you want a job, check it. Email help at rossmangroup.com. We have excellent benefits, excellent, lovely working conditions for anybody who can count the inventory. So that being said, let's move on to replacing this chip. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is take a hot air rework station. ISL9239. It says out of stock. It says out of stock. What is that in terms of stock marketing? It says it in the URL, X5. <laughs> X5. I'm running out. Inventory! Alright, so. Okay, I'm going to use my hot air. I believe I have a 6.5 millimeter nozzle here. Thank you for the burrito. And thank you, Malta McNurchie. I appreciate that. It's very kind of you. Too good says Spectrum hates PP bus. Apparently they do. Apparently they do. They're not very nice people there at Spectrum. They don't care if you have internet or not. They just care that they get their $409 plus tax a month. I 
I really do want to try to beam the Fios that I get at home here, because all I can get here is D Verizon DSL, which is actually down more often than the... My DSL is down more often than the damn cable is, because I, I actually got this PFSense router that does load balancing, so what I, what I do is I have a router that when Time Warner goes down or Spectrum goes down, it automatically switches over to the Verizon DSL without you noticing. It's supposed to be, you know, instant kind of thing. But the reality is that I actually have more downtime with Verizon DSL than I do with the Time Warner, making it completely useless as a redundant connection. New York City Internet. Uh, but Lovely. Wait, I, I yelled at Mikey to do it. What? That means that it was your fault all along. No, Mikey told me to tell you. It was you. It was me. Are you pocketing chips? Not the right Empty one. your pockets. Take off your shoes. No, I'm kidding. You can't trust Kevin. What is that green stuff on the end of my flux? Much gross. All right. We're going to suck up all those balls because there's nothing I enjoy doing more on stream than sucking up a bunch of balls. All right. I'm going to suck up all those balls. Mm, I love sucking up balls, especially on live stream. I'm going to move those two capacitors over that I wrecked with while I was busy sucking up the balls. And we're going to ready ourselves for a new ISL chip. Mm, beautiful. Now let's see if I was right and if the problem was the ISL all along. By the way, this is this chip is such a sissy that the board can have zero corrosion and this can happen. It just dies. Like poof. Out of thin air. Just poof. I really like to beam the files from my home to the store. That would be lovely. It's only about five miles away. I have a really tall building. I'm gonna beam the files from my apartment here. Just so you watch. If you watch Time Warner. Bastards. Yeah, see how the chip just fell? Now I'm gonna kinda of yaw this back and forth to make the chip dance in a place. Dance, Chip, dance! Yeah, beautiful. Thanks for all the free lessons. I've successfully fixed my own Mac. Never thought I'd carry out SMD work. But congratulations. I'm glad you figured something out. Must feel good to get that nice dopamine rush at the end when something actually works. Speaking of something actually working, let's cool this thing off for a moment and see if I get 20 volts in my charger. If I do, then that's another machine out of the queue. Okay, so what do we trust more? ISL 9239 from Apple or ISL 9239 from store.rossmangroup.com? One way to find out, my friends. One way to find out. Just zoom in with that crappy Sony stock lens on my cheapo camera. Plug this thing in and see what we get. Oh, check that out. We're at 20.3 volts and 1.4 amps. Now, this is my equivalent on the new MacBooks of fan spin. And it's going to turn off and turn on again because it's complaining that it doesn't have a battery attached. Sometimes they do that when they come back from the dead. But as can be seen, this is turning on and working, meaning our fix worked and that our chip from store.rossmangroup.com saved the day.
So that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I didn't hit record. So now I can upload that as a main channel video. Oh, that makes me sad. Much sad. All right, so I would replace all three of those and see what happens. Awesome, good. Oh well. Time for a burrito. So with that, I'll speak to you. I'll see you all later.